Hi, it's Rabbi Shmuel Paulin. Welcome back. We're going to talk about the greatest book possibly ever written. I got an email from a mentor and a guide who is very intelligent, very smart, and he says this is possibly the best self-help book ever written. And I opted in to find out what book it was, and it was indeed the book that I've heard so many times is the best book of all time, the Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which teaches you how to make money, how to become rich. And apparently all great magnates, all great millionaires and billionaires have read this. And apparently, according to him, there's a secret, one secret, which will tell you how to make all that money. And it's in chapter two. So I look at chapter two and what I see is not a secret. I see it's not a secret. It's a series of steps. And they are the same steps that I outlined in my video, which you can watch on this channel, how to crush your New Year's resolution this year. It's the exact same steps. This is the greatest book of all time. And I gave you the exact same steps on my YouTube video. What does that tell you? It tells you that Jewish mysticism has the answers. Boy, does it have the answers. Jewish mysticism, Kabbalah, Hasidic philosophy, the great rabbis, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe, all this stuff. All this deep Jewish stuff has the answers to the world's problems because I came up with basically the same steps that he outlines here. And I'm going to read to you what his steps are and you will be able to use it to make a lot of money and fulfill your dreams. And let's go through it. The first thing is be as definite as you can as to the amount. So you should not say, I'm going to make a lot of money. You should say, I'm going to make $100,000 by the end of this year. Be absolutely definite because it's going to be a lot easier to fulfill a goal that is definite and concrete than a goal that is nebulous and unclear. Um, you'll never be able to hit uh, a target if you are just aiming in every direction. You'll be able to hit a target when you know exactly where the target is and you aim exactly towards it. Second, determine exactly what you intend to give in return for the money you desire. This is key and this was what I called sacrifice in my video and it is the idea that nothing comes for free. You, nothing is actually free. You have to give for every take. So the question is what is going to be the thing that you're going to give up the sleep, the money, the energy, what are you going to be able to give to get that $100,000 back? There has to be a sacrifice. And that's why the Jews would always bring sacrifices in the Holy Temple, because you have to sacrifice to get anything, to come closer to God, which is closer to perfection, or closer to uh, peace and harmony and success. Uh, all that is part of becoming closer to God. And to do that, we bring sacrifices because if you want to accomplish anything, you need to be able to sacrifice. Fourth, create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once, whether you're ready or not, to put this plan into action. I like how he says, ready or not. Put the plan into action immediately. You've got to have a plan. You've got to know exactly what are the steps from A to Z, what are step number one, what is step number two, what's step number three, and put it into action immediately so that it starts happening and you don't push it off because if you push it off, you'll push it off again and again and again, it will never happen. You have to start immediately, even if you don't feel like you're ready. And this happens all, all the time when I am writing sales letters, I'm writing copy for other people, uh, advertising copy, and sometimes I don't feel it. I don't feel like I'm being creative right now, but I do it anyway and the creativity eventually comes. Fifth. Write out a clear, concise statement of the amount of money you intend to acquire. Name the time limit for its acquisition. State what you intend to give in return for the money and describe clearly the plan through which you intend to accumulate it. So this is similar to number four, but you're making a concise statement of how much money you intend to get, $100,000, and I have to do it by the end of 2023. And in state intend what you intend to give in return for the money. That's basically your sacrifice. Again, we're talking about sacrifice. Uh, what are you going to give to get what you want to get? Six, read your written statement aloud twice daily, once before retiring at night and once before arising in the morning, once after arising in the morning, as you read, see and feel and believe yourself already in possession of the money. So I don't consider this as important as he does, but there is this whole idea of the law of attraction. And if you believe it and you definitely think you'll get it, you'll get it. I haven't found that it actually works. I haven't found that you actually get what you think you're going to get if you believe it 
100%. Even if I believe something 100%, I still sometimes don't get it because it's up to God. It's up to nature. It's not up to me. It doesn't just matter what I think and how I feel. That's not going to get me the results in the world that I want. The world is up to God. The world is up to the creator. The world is up to the one in control of nature. The world is going to give you whatever it wants to give you. And by thinking that it's going to happen, it will have a good impact, but it's not going to guarantee that you're actually going to get it. So this whole idea of feel and believe yourself already in possession of the money, I don't think that's really going to help you. Focus on the plan. Focus on the goal and focus on reading it every morning and every night so that you continue making progress every single day and that you are able to never forget what you're meant to do. And then he talks about a very important point, which is the obsession. In order to make a fortune, in order to reach your goal, you have to be obsessed with your goal. And maybe that's really the secret that he's talking about, the absolute giving yourself over in a sense of the sacrifice to the cause, to the goal, to the extent that nothing can get in your way and you will never stop no matter how many times you fail. You will absolutely never stop. Nothing can keep you down. If you ask someone to buy something because you're doing sales 10 times, 20 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, you have to have that obsession that you don't care how many times you fall on your face. You will keep going and you will reach that goal and nothing will stop you. And as it says in Judaism, nothing stands in the way of will. If you truly want something and it's something that you're in control over, not just like the weather, you know, it's something that you can actually control based on your actions, you will eventually get what you want. If you want a successful business, you just keep adjusting and adjusting and adjusting. And if you're willing to adjust enough times, you will eventually get it. Now, this is a great plan. And I already said, uh, I already said how to do this plan, this secret in my video. And I would like to make this book better by adding one more thing, because he's saying, look at the plan in the morning and in the evening. That's actually what it says in the Torah. It says, B'shach b'chav kumecha. When you lie down and when you get up, you should remember the unity of God. The unity of God is the source of all of this. It's the source of success. And it wants you to remember that twice during the day. I don't know if he got this from the Bible, but it is clearly in the Bible that you're supposed to remember about God in the morning you go to sleep and when you go in the morning. But there is a problem in that sometimes... Once you get going on the think and go rich, uh, think and grow rich plan, you're going to face obstacles. Things are not going to go right. You're going to face rejection. You're going to get depressed. You're going to get stressed. Things will happen. Like it says, S happens. S will happen. So where does this plan leave you when you are knocked down? When you're knocked down, the plan goes to fooey, you know, the plan goes to nothing. It goes to, uh, it evaporates because, you know, this was all great. And I was looking at it in the morning. I was looking at it in the evening and I had my plan completely set up. But today I'm sick and I don't feel like getting up and doing any work. So the sickness has completely derailed the whole plan. And now you're off the timing and you're off the plan and it might not work out because you face certain obstacles. So how do you overcome obstacles? I have many videos about this. There are many ways to overcome obstacles, but I'm going to give you one. And let's add this to think and grow rich. Let's add one more step after the obsession. Let's uh, let's, let's add one more step that will make you overcome the obstacles that will surely arise when you're trying to reach your goal. God will make obstacles. It will happen. It will not go smooth. Nothing goes smooth. I have a whole video about why things don't go smooth, but it's not meant to go smooth. It never will go smooth. So just forget about it going smooth and keep going and do not let the obstacles keep you down. So this last step is what I call Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva was a Talmudist. He was one of the rabbis of the Talmud. He was one of the Pharisees. And he didn't know how to learn any Torah until he was 40 years old. And then he found a woman named Rachel and he wanted to marry her. And then she said, yeah, but you have to go learn. You have to go study. You have to become a scholar. I can't marry someone like you, just a shepherd. I have to marry a scholar. So he learned and after just a few years, he had such an incredible mind. He became one of the greatest scholars 
of the Talmud, one of the greatest scholars of the generation, and there has in fact never been a scholar as great as Rabbi Akiva. That's how incredible he was, and I can't believe people didn't think that he was the Messiah. He actually thought that someone named Bar Kokhba was the Messiah, but I personally think he would have made a great Messiah because of what happened to him, because he did what Jesus did times 10. He gave up his entire life for his belief in the Torah because a Roman general uh, called him and nine other Talmudic rabbis in and accused them of certain crimes, which they did not commit, and said that based on the Bible, they are liable for the death penalty. But he didn't just give them all the death penalty like so many people had, like Jesus did. He got the death penalty. He tortured them. He tortured them in every single possible way. The most horrific torture you could possibly imagine. And to Rebbe Akiva, who was the greatest of them all, he actually shaved off his entire skin. All the skin from his body, from every single limb of his body, from every single inch of his body. Rebbe Akiva endured that kind of pain. And his reaction was, thank God, I am so happy to undergo this suffering. I am so happy to undergo this pain. Why? Because it's hard to imagine, but he actually wanted it because the Torah says you should love God with all your heart and all your might, and he never knew when he's going to be able to fulfill that commandment. He never knew when he's going to be able to fulfill uh, loving God with all your heart and all your might. But now that all his skin is shaved off and he's in, in such incredible pain like no person has possibly imagined, he's now able to fulfill the Torah's commandment to love God with all your heart and all your might. His entire being is given up to God. Now, this is the most incredible sacrifice that has maybe happened in all of humanity. Rabbi Akiva. So my step that I would add to think and grow rich, to make it more powerful, make it more complete, make it work better, and I'll, God willing, make a video about this as well. But think of Rabbi Akiva. That is your step that you need to add. That's step seven. Because he's got six, this is seven. Seven is to think of Rabbi Akiva, to think about a man that was happy to have all of his skin shaved off his body and then was mercilessly, mercilessly killed. And you say to yourself, if Rabbi Akiva can do that, then I can get out of bed when I'm sick. If Rabbi Akiva can have all his skin shaved off and still be happy, then I can approach a boss for a raise. I can do anything uncomfortable. I can approach a girl that I like and see to see if she likes me and to see if we have uh, something uh, in common. I can do anything because if Rabbi Akiva can do that and he's a human being and I'm a human being, then I can absolutely do Anything that comes my way, and this goes back to the idea of sacrifice, Rabbi Akiva made the ultimate sacrifice, and we should be happy recognizing that we don't have to go through what he went through, but if he did that, we can do this. If he did that, we can go and keep to our plan to make the $100,000 by 2023. We can keep to that even when it's painful, even when there's obstacles, even when there's sickness and depression. You can get up and do it anyway. Even when you're scared, it doesn't matter because your pain is nothing compared to the pain of Rabbi Akiva. And that's the step, is to remember Rabbi Akiva, remember all those who made the ultimate sacrifice for their lives, for their religion, for their God, but especially remember Rabbi Akiva who got all his skin shaved off and that should go down in history as something that inspires everyone for all time. So let it inspire you. And whenever you uh, encounter an obstacle, this is the strategy that I'm going to give you now. Think of a man like Rabbi Akiva who got all his skin shaved off and he was happy anyway because he's serving his God. If he can do that, then you can do this. You can do anything that's not that. As long as you don't have to go through that, you can do it. If he went through that pain, you can go through your pain of getting up and doing what needs to be done even though it's painful. Uh, may God bless us all that uh, we do not experience any more sacrifices like the sacrifice of Rabbi Akiva, that we should grow in our knowledge of God and our connection to God in a peaceful way, in a happy way, in a joyful way, to always be living with joy and no stress and no anxiety and no depression 
and no bipolar, and all these diseases should be banished from the face of the earth. There should be no more war. Uh, Putin should be banished from the face of the earth. Ukraine should be peaceful. Russia should be peaceful. America should be strong. There's inflation should uh, not be harming our, our pocketbooks and making life more difficult for us. Rather, we should not have inflation. Everything should go in a messianic way and because we're leading to the messianic redemption. And it's time to end wars like the war in Russia and Ukraine. And it's time to end all the sickness and depression and to start to reach all of our goals and use the power that we gain from a video like this to help other people. That's when your true soul comes out. When you dedicate your life to service, when you dedicate your life to helping others, you will be on fire. You will be on an unbelievable high like you can't imagine. If you go out and try to help the homeless, if you go out and try to help uh, people who are blind, if you go out and try to uh, help people in the soup kitchen, um, you will find a high of your life much greater than anything you can do with yourself. Like Buddhism is very focused on yourself. But Judaism is very focused outward, very focused on service to other people. And that will give you more well-being and more joy than anything could, you could imagine in the world. I've experienced this myself. I've done it. You can do it. Set your soul on fire by fulfilling your goals and using it to bring it out to other people and make them experience the unlimited nature of the human being that you have experienced.